it is entirely possible that one of the prescription medications that you're taking on a daily basis is contributing to your erectile dysfunction. Now, this should be a conversation that every doctor has with every patient before they start a new medication, but doctors are busy and they very often forget that erectile dysfunction is one of the potential side effects of the medication they're about to prescribe. In this video, I'm going to tell you the most common drugs that can lead directly to erectile dysfunction and also give you access to the full list of medications that list ED as a possible side effect. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and I certainly don't want you suffering from erectile dysfunction because you're taking a medication that's causing it. Your job as a good patient, if you discover that one of the medications you're currently taking is leading to erectile dysfunction, is not to stop that medication, but to have either an in-person or virtual conversation with your healthcare provider and see if there's not an alternative you can switch to that doesn't cause erectile dysfunction as a side effect. The first class of medications that most commonly lead to erectile dysfunction is medications for high blood pressure or hypertension. The most likely culprits are diuretics like thiazide diuretics and loop diuretics, but also beta blockers and alpha blockers are known to lead to an unacceptably high rate of erectile dysfunction. A better option would be an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. I'll provide the actual names of individual drugs in the show notes below this video for these different drug classes. The next drug class that's known to have this problematic side effect is the antidepressants. Uh, some of these drugs are also used uh, for anxiety as well. Uh, the SSRIs are by far and away the most likely to result in erectile dysfunction, also the SNRIs and the Mayo inhibitors, and even the tricyclic and tetracyclic antidepressants can cause erectile dysfunction. And I'll put uh, the, the most common drugs in these drug classes in the show notes below. The next drug class that can cause serious erectile problems for some men is the antihistamines. And this, uh, this is one example of where even an over-the-counter medication that you don't need a prescription for can lead to significant ED. So any of the uh, antihistamines from Benadryl to Dramamine to Phenergan to Cetirizine uh, or Loratadine in some men cause a significant degree of erectile dysfunction. The next drug class to look out for is acid reflux medication, specifically the H2 blockers. These are also antihistamines, and so they can, in some men, have the same exact erectile dysfunction effect. The most likely culprit is Tagamet or Cimetidine, but any of the H2 blockers can have this unacceptable side effect. The next two drug classes are the benzodiazepines and the opiates. So virtually any of the benzodiazepines like uh, Xanax, Valium, Clonopin, any of these are going to lead to at least a certain degree of erectile dysfunction. And then also the entire drug class of opiates, which are the narcotic pain relievers, they are notorious for causing significant erectile dysfunction. So again, if you discover that you're taking one of the medications on the long list that I put in the show notes down below, don't stop taking that drug cold turkey without consulting your healthcare provider. Have a conversation with your doctor and say, hey, this I have ED. It says that this can cause ED. Is there not something else you can switch me to that doesn't cause ED? Or maybe I can just wean down and stop this medication altogether and therefore have less ED. You have to have that conversation with your healthcare provider. Besides prescription medication, there is a list of things that can cause erectile dysfunction. And at the end of this video, a video is gonna pop up right there that will tell you some other causes and risk factors for erectile dysfunction that you can then begin to take charge of. This is Dr. Barry, I'll see you next time.